Welcome back to the electric kiln project. Today we will be looking into the wiring of the electronics allowing us to precisely control and ramp up the temperature of the kiln. But before we get started, a little disclaimer. The information provided in this video is for educational purpose only. This project includes high voltages which can be lethal. Please do not attempt to replicate any of the actions shown in this video without proper safety measures. Here's where we left off with the kiln and the connections for the two heating elements visible on the right side. The control box is mounted using these two brackets, which the box can be screwed into. On the top front we insert the Orba PID controller, which is used to control the heating elements. At the lower back the free phase power cable and fuses are mounted. There's also a hole for ventilation to keep the electronics cool. However, as you will see later, I started with a much smaller hole without any active cooling and it turned out to be a bad decision. Inside the control box you can see the components that we will be fitting. These include PID controller, fuses and the solid state relays, which will handle turning on and off the heating elements to reach the desired temperature. I used Fusion 360's heat metal functionality to model the control box. This allowed me to unfold the metal into a drawing of the sheet metal that we can cut and fold. Unfortunately I lost the footage of the sheet metal work, but here's the result. The box is simply cut with metal shears, riveted and painted. Before moving on to the actual assembly, let's take a look at this diagram I've made showing how everything will be connected. First we have the two heating elements on the right, which is controlled by a solid stay relay each. The solid state relays lets us control the high voltage powering the heating elements using a low voltage signal from the PID controller. To be able to control the temperature of the kiln, we must have a way of measuring it. For this I've chosen an S-type thermocouple which can measure up to 1300 degrees Celsius. The brain of it all is this Auber PID controller, all components used of course listed in the video description. A pair of wire connects the thermocouple to the connectors number 4 and 5 on the PID controller. Another pair of wires connect the control signal to both relays, as the PID controls both heating elements simultaneously. These connectors are numbered 7 and 8. To power the PID controller, we use the first brown live wire, neutral connected to pin 9 and 10 on the PID controller. The second live wire goes through a 13 amp fuse to the input of the lower solid state relay, while the third live wire is connected to the upper solid state relay in the same way. The fuses protect against too much current being drawn by the heating elements and short circuits. Each of the heating elements is connected to its corresponding relay, and the other side of the heating elements is connected to neutral. To protect against electrical shocks and other falls, we connect the earth wire to the chassis of the control box and the kiln itself. Let's begin by mounting the PG cable gland for the power cable. The free phase power cable has five conductors that are fed through the gland until it can tighten around the outer insulation. We give everything a little pull test to ensure that it's tightly secured. We can shorten the yellow protective earth wire and the two line wires that will connect to the fuses to around 10 cm. Then we insert the first fuse holder and mount it securely with a small plastic nut. The end of the first line wire can be uninsulated and soldered to one of the fuse terminals. Most connections will be covered up by heat shrink tubing or electrical tape to limit the risk of something touching where it shouldn't. Next we pre-tin the other terminal of the fuse holder so we can solder the wire going to the solid state relay onto it. They also ensure decent cable management by using plenty of cable ties. Off camera I mounted the second fuse and connect the other live wire to it. Before moving on we insert the two fuses and screw them into place. Now we can move on to the solid state relays which come with these oddly shaped heat sinks. They screw together and ideally some heat sink paste should have been applied between the two surfaces. On these specific relays pin 3 and 4 controls the input while pin 1 and 2 are the output connections for the high voltage side. To ease the connection to the relay, the cable going there have cable locks crimped onto them. The live wire from the fuse holder is connected to one of the output pins on the relay. And the same for the next relay.
Then a loose wire can be connected to the output of the relay, which will be going to the heating element when mounting everything together in the kiln. For the input of the relays, I've made this little wire assembly with black for the ground connection and red wires for the control signal. Again, I make sure that everything is nice and tight. Mounting the heat sinks to the sheet metal box is a bit cumbersome and not the most elegant solution, but it works. Before inserting the PID controller, I connect the wires for the thermocouple as they will be hard to reach when it's mounted inside the box. As you can see, there is a sticker on the side which shows all the pin numbers and what should be connected where. With the thermocouple wires connected, the PID can be inserted and the two signal wires for the solid state relays can be connected to pins 7 and 8, as described in the diagram we looked at earlier. Next is the live wire from the power cable, which is connected directly to pin 10 of the PID controller to power it. And then it gets a neutral wire connected to pin 9. The PID is delivered with a smart plastic clip, so it can be mounted to the sheet metal box. As there are several things needing a neutral connection, I will connect them all into this beefy terminal block. So now the neutral from the input power cable is connected to the neutral connection of the PID controller. As the next step, I will tie the up the thermocouple wires with an extra cable tie and connect the thermocouple itself. Initially, I've used these fork type cable locks, which I later figured did not connect well. So these should rather be ring type to get a more secure connection, as seen on this image. Now we get to the protective earth connection, which will be made by adding a ring type cable lock to the PE wire. This can then be screwed into the sheet metal enclosure. Note that a washer with sharp teeth is added to provide a better connection to the enclosure. I use my multimeter in continuity mode to check that the PE connector of the power plug is correctly connected to the enclosure. Later I figured that adding an extra wire to connect to the kiln itself would be a good idea, as it's not guaranteed that the control box will make a safe connection to the kiln itself. The two heating elements need a neutral connection each, so two blue wires are added to the terminal block for exactly that. Again, all connections are tightened properly as they will be carrying tens of amps, so we don't want any loose connections. Here you can see the two live and neutral wires, which will be connected to the heating elements in just a second. Now we're ready to mount the control box to the kiln by first inserting the thermocouple into the side of the kiln. The live wires from the solid state relay is connected to the upper heating element followed by neutral wire for the same element. The second neutral wire can then be connected to the lower heating element. And finally, the other live wire can be connected. I didn't get footage of connecting the protective earth, but you can see it's mounted just to the bottom of the kiln in this clip, where the control box is mounted to the mounting brackets. Even though the sheet metal in itself is a bit flimsy, the final construction ends up being plenty sturdy when attached to the kiln. Here's the final result, and unfortunately you'll have to wait until next time to see it being powered up. Here we'll discover some important improvements to do as everything gets a bit too hot and some components melt. So make sure to subscribe and I'll promise to be back soon. Thanks for watching.